in those days, uh, the girl needed to get married to move on with her life. So, being a kind father, he thought he was going to introduce her to the king. So the king's top dog, how is he going to do that? So one day in the market, he sees the king, and he says, you know, king, I have this daughter. I tell you what, I'm sure you've never heard of this, but she can actually turn straw into gold. The king goes, get out of here. That's crazy talk. I've never seen such a thing. But the baker says, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Believe me. So because the baker had given him no reason to really distrust him in the past, the king says, okay, bring her over. I'll have her turn the straw into gold like you said she can. So the king brings her over to the castle. She meets the king. The baker brings her over to the castle, meets the king. And the king places her in a room. He says, see all this straw? This room is like the size of your living room. Not too big, but it's not nothing. Places her in this room, locks the door, and says, I'll see you tomorrow, and we'll really see if you can turn this straw into gold. And walks away. So the girl's standing there in the middle of this room, piles of hay all the way around, and she's thinking, my dad's crazy. How, why would he place me in such a, a crazy situation? I can't turn this straw into gold. That's ridiculous. She's getting more and more upset, more and more anxious. How is she going to do this? What's the king going to do to her when he finds out the truth? She starts crying. She starts crying her eyes out. She has no idea what she's going to do. When she's finally out of tears, the air around her kind of shimmers a little bit, and pop, a little dwarf appears. Short little dwarf, big nose, kind of a wart on his face. Where did this guy come from? And the dwarf goes, little girl, I know you're in trouble. What can I do to help you? And she says, see all this straw? I'm supposed to turn this into gold. I can't do this. So the dwarf says, you know what? I can help you with that, but I'll need something in return. What do you have to give me? And the girl thinks she's poor. She comes from a poor family. She's got really nothing except this necklace around her neck that her mom had given her before she passed away. So she offers him the necklace, and the dwarf looks at it and says, deal. Turn around. The little girl turns around. Five minutes later, when she turns back, all the straw in the entire room has been turned into gold. She goes, I can't believe it. You actually did it. How? Oh my God, here's my necklace. Please take it. This is worth more than the necklace. So he says, okay. Boom. Disappears. The next morning, the king appears, opens the door, and his jaw drops. He can't believe all this straw has been turned into gold. And he says, little girl, this is unbelievable. I've never seen such a sight. If you can do this for me again, I'll make you my wife. You'll be queen of the entire kingdom. She says, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got a chance of being queen, whatever you say, king. He says, but there's a catch. You're going to need to transform a lot more straw than this. He takes her into the main ballroom. Huge, massive ceilings, vaulted arches. You can fit three hockey rinks into this ballroom. And it's piled full of straw for this test closes the door and says, I'll see you tomorrow. So once again, the little girl, she's not a little girl, right? Marrying age. Back then, it was like 13. <laughs> <laughs> so she's waiting around, getting really impatient. She starts pleading for the little dwarf to show up. Little dwarf, little dwarf, where are you? I need your help, I need your help, I need your help. The air shimmers a little bit, and poof, the dwarf appears and says, what can I do for you now? She says, I need you to do the same thing for me. I need you to turn all this straw into gold. And he says, but you have nothing to offer me. You have no necklace. You have no jewels. You have nothing. And she says, I really, really need your help. Anything you want, anything you want, anything you want. So he says, I'll do it for you in return for your firstborn child. So this is a pretty intense deal he's making. And she thinks about it, thinks about it. Firstborn child, he might forget about it by then. I might not even have a kid. So, being the optimistic baker's daughter that she is, she says, deal. Turn, she turns around. Five minutes later, when she turns back, all the straw in the entire ball has been transformed into these stacks upon stacks upon stacks of bright yellow shimmering gold. She says, I can't believe you did it. If I ever have a kid, this kid is yours. Disappears. The next morning when the king arrives, cannot believe his eyes, knows he's going to be the richest king that has ever lived, and proposes to 
to the girl on the spot, and they get married. Nine months later, she has a kid. She's forgotten about the deal. That night, in her bedroom, nursing a child, the air shimmers, and the dwarf appears, surprises the bejesus out of her. She goes, oh, dwarf, I hope you're not here for what I think you're after. And he says, remember your promise. We had a deal. But at this point, she has a kid. She doesn't want to give up her only child. So she starts pleading with the dwarf the same way she pleaded with him on the very first night. I can't give up my child. I can't give up my child anything you want. Let's hear it. I'm the queen of the richest kingdom the world has ever seen. Have anything you want. And he says, I can turn straw into gold. Your jewel and money mean nothing to me. A living thing is what I want. So she goes, is there absolutely nothing you can do to let me have my child? And the dwarf is clever and says, if you can guess my name after three days, I'll let you keep the kid. Can't be that difficult to guess somebody's name, little dwarf. I'll just ask around. There can't be too many little dwarfs like this in the kingdom, so I'm sure I'll be able to discover his name. She says, deal. The dwarf says, okay, I'll see you tomorrow, and the day after that, and the day after that, and I'll give you your chances to guess my name. Poof, he disappears. So she thinks about it. She thinks about it. She thinks about it. The next day, the dwarf comes back. Have you guessed my name yet? So she starts running through the list. Alfred, Beatrice, Carol, Danny. She goes on and on and on, all the way to the end. Can't guess his name. She just gets all the names she's ever thought of. She can't guess his name. So he says, ha, ha, ha. I'm sorry. You haven't guessed my name. Poof, he disappears. So she's a little distraught. The king calls over her favorite knight and says, Sir Lancelot, you have to help me out. I've got this, I have this name to guess, and I can't figure out where to start. Could you please follow this dwarf? Try to find out where he lives and see if you can find out his name for me. He says, yes, your highness. Rides off. The next day, the dwarf comes back. Have you guessed my name? And the queen is pretty stuck. She just starts naming off things. Is your name chair? No. Is your name table? No. Is your name anvil? No. Is your name broom? No. She just keeps spitting at words left, right, and center. Nothing adds up. So he's getting really confident now. He goes, ha, 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 I'll see you tomorrow. You better know my name. Poof, he disappears. The morning of the third day, the knight rides by back up to the castle, meets with the queen. And he says, queen, I rode all over the kingdom, high, low, east, west, and finally, as I rode across the mountains where the sun sets into a lake of fire, I found a little hut out in the woods. And in front of this hut, there was a fire. And around this fire, a little dwarf was dancing and singing, ha, 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 today I bake, tomorrow brew, if only that they knew, Rumpelstiltskin, I'm filed. So he says to the queen, that's got to be it. Have you ever heard of such a name? The queen says, no. I think you got it. So the third day, the dwarf comes back, really eager for his prize. He says, have you guessed my name, oh, your highness? She's playing around. She says, oh, is your name Sophie? No. Is your name Luke? No. Is your name Rumpelstiltskin? And at that, the dwarf had smoke coming out of his ears. He couldn't believe what was happening. His face turns all red. Veins bursting out everywhere. His feet start stamping. His feet start stamping. And it explodes into a cloud of smoke. And since that day, no one has ever seen the dwarf again. Mr. Chip.